In this example, we take a look at the Quick Engrave toolpath whilst using some specialist tools which are spring loaded so that they can engrave over uneven surfaces. We also take a look at its drawbacks of not being able to specify exact cutting depths and then ways in which we can encourage more cut depth by applying more pressure to the tool. So let's just go to File, we'll just close this down. So let's go and open an existing file from the Quick Engraving Toolpath Guides project folder. We're going to open the Quick Engrave Vector Drawing.crv file, press Open, and here we have some text that we're going to use to demonstrate the Quick Engrave Toolpath. So let's switch over to the Toolpaths tab, and then we're going to use the Set option to check our material setup. Now the material I plan to cut into for this sign is a piece of thin brass, so the material thickness reflects that, we're going to set that to 0.1. XY position is going to be in the lower left hand corner, my Z0 will be Z0 in off the material surface, and check over the rapid Z gaps above the material, home and start position, happy with those, so we could go ahead and press OK. So to access the Quick Engrave Toolpath, we simply go over to Toolpath Operations. It's this icon here, the Quick Engraving Toolpath. Click on that and that will open up the Quick Engrave Toolpath form. So this form is set out in a similar fashion to the other Toolpath forms that we have. So you select your tool at the top, Strategy Selection in this area here. Then we have Toolpath Specific Parameters. We could input a name for the toolpath. And in the quick engraving form, we also have the option here to select the post processor directly from this form. So let's start at the top and we'll work our way down. So to select a tool, we use the select option and that's going to open up the tool database. So the quick engraving toolpath is designed to work with specialist engraving tools. Now in the tool database, there is two sections relevant to specialist engraving. So we've got engraving and specialist at the bottom there. So we're just going to look at the specialist tool and under specialist tool we have the most common type of tool that is used and that's the diamond drag tool which is an industrial diamond which is then dragged around the surface of the material to create the engraving. And so you'll notice that within the cutting parameters for the diamond drag tool there is no cut depth specified. And the reason for this is that the diamond drag tools often come spring loaded so that they are able to be ran over uneven surfaces. But this does mean that we are not able to force the tool down to a specific depth because it's going to be controlled by the amount of pressure that we can apply to the tool and how much compression is in the spring at that moment in time. There is a way to encourage more depth and we'll go over that shortly. Other options that we have for this tool in the tool database is the ability to specify the diameter, the angle, we can alter the cutting parameters for the line width and we can alter the step over. Okay, so we're just going to go with the defaults for this tool and we're just going to go ahead and press OK. So a way that we can control or encourage more depth than using a spring loaded tool is by using this depth or pressure option here. And this allows us to specify a depth which we're going to place onto the spring loaded tool to encourage more compression in the spring, which will then force the tool or at least increase the pressure on the surface of what we're going to be cutting with the tool that we've selected. So for this particular example, we're just going to apply a depth or pressure of 0.1 in there. So what that will mean is we'll take the tool down 0.1 of an inch in the Z axis and that will increase more pressure at the tip of the tool. So here we should really select some vectors to apply to this toolpath. So we've got our vectors selected just by dragging a box and selecting those. Then we need to choose uh, the strategy in this case, so whether we want to just create an outline or we want to fill uh, the text there. In this case we're just going to go with the outline and then we'll just calculate that and you can see in the 2D view we can actually see the uh, toolpaths there and if we just quickly close this down and go into the 
preview toolpaths option and we can actually preview how that may look. So if we put that in the ISO view we can see the toolpaths and then if we go ahead and preview that we can take a look and we can see that it's created the outline for the text there. So let's just close that down and then we're just going to double click to go back into the quick engrave form and go over to the 2D view. So we've looked at the outline strategy, now we're going to look at the fill strategy. So if we select fill, you'll see now that we have further options that we can use to actually fill that text, whereby we could apply an offset strategy to create a toolpath that would look like what we've got here in this image. Or we could look at using the hatch option that will just create uh, lines in the text at an angle that we can specify in this form here. And so the handy thing that we have here for the fill strategy is the option to specify a step over of the lines that are going to be used to fill the text. For example, let's just go with an offset strategy here and we're going to put in a step over of 0 0.025 in there and then if we just go ahead and calculate that and if we just zoom in on the text there you'll see that it's going to fill as much as it can an offset strategy with a 0 0.025 inch step over. So if we change that and we applied a hatch in there and we'll just put in an angle of 45 degrees, same step over and if we press calculate there you'll see it's updated and it's now filled the text with lines that are 0 0.025 inches apart at a 45 degree angle. And then we also have the option here checkbox to apply a crosshatch. So if we applied that and press calculate you'll see that it will create another set of angled hatch lines that are in the opposing 45 degree angle. Okay, so we're just going to uncheck that and calculate that and then we'll go and see how that looks in our toolpath preview. So go into the preview toolpath options and then we'll just preview that toolpath and we'll put it in the ISO view and we can see how that part may look. Remember, because we are using a spring-loaded tool, the actual depth that you may see on the preview may not be represented in your part that you cut out. And so it all depends on how stiff the spring is being used to spring-load the diamond drag tool and the density of the material that you're going to be using. So let's close out of the preview there. I'm going to go back into the 2D view. Use the option here to zoom to fit. I'm going to double click to go back into that quick engrave tool. Now some machines come with what's called a nose cone and it works in a similar fashion to a spring loaded tool in the sense that it's able to move freely and engrave over uneven surfaces except the nose cone has the tool at a fixed depth below where it detects the top of the surface which means that we can engrave at a fixed depth whether we're using flat or uneven material and therefore it improves the depth consistency. So to use the nose cone we simply check the use nose cone option there and then we need to specify some data in this section of the form. So for the tool depth we need to just input how much the tool is protruding below the nose cone. So in this case we're going to leave that at that value of 0 0.02 inches in there and then we need to specify the number of passes that we're going to attempt to get to our cut depth. So in this case we could just look at using these arrows or we could type in a value if we wanted to. In this case we're going to use 3 here and then we could simply use the calculate option and then if we just go and close that down and then preview what we've got there and if we just zoom in we can see that what it's done it's created three overlaid lines which represents the passes when using the nose cone. So let's just use the option here to zoom to fit and we're just going to close out of the preview toolpath form. And so that's all there is to calculate in a quick engraving toolpath. Now the last thing that we haven't discussed is the post processor option that's available in the quick engraving toolpath form. 
And so this enables me to quickly save out a toolpath and also if we have a machine that allows us to do so we can output the toolpath directly to the machine itself. For example a Roland EGX300 machine will enable me to do that. So I'm just going to go into my post processor list. I'm going to go to R on the keyboard to bring up all the R post processors. You can see I've got my Roland EGX300 there. And then if I use the check option here, I can output this directly to the machine. And so we use this option here. And then we can select the driver, which will then communicate with the machine. Now for the Roland EGX300 it uses a printer driver so we'd simply select an option from the drop down if we had the driver installed and then we could just simply go ahead and press OK and it would send all of that data to the Roland EGX300 as you would do printing a normal document to a printer where we'd then use the option to output the toolpaths. So let's just close that down and not only can we output the toolpaths in the form, but we can also look at the traditional way of saving toolpaths using the Save Toolpath icon. And so you'll see in this form we also have the option to output directly to the machine like we saw in the form earlier. And so having the ability to output your toolpaths directly to the machine in form just allows us to save out the toolpaths more quickly and more efficiently. And so that completes this overview of the quick engraving toolpath. So let's just save this file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and then in the Project folder you can find this file, Quick Engrave 2D Toolpaths. Press Save and you can access that from the Project folder.